If you clicked on this video, you probably ran into optimization issues on your project. Or maybe you're just bored. Well, whatever the reason, let's talk about optimization. The word itself brings horrific thoughts to most people. Optimization may be a daunting and tedious task, but I am going to help you improve your game's performance with the best optimization methods. So now let's get started. I usually like classifying optimization as three different categories, visual, physics, and process. Luckily, GoDaddy provides a tool to help you figure out what's eating your performance the most, and it's called the Profiler. If you open the Debug tab at the bottom, you will find Profiler and Visual Profiler, and they're both pretty straightforward. You click Start on either one of the profilers, and it will tell you what is using the most performance. Once you've figured out what's killing your frames, let's find a solution. First, let's start with optimizing the visual side. Occlusion culling. First up, what is culling? You usually hear this word a lot when it comes to rendering. Well, let me put it in simple terms for you. When something is culled, it is not rendered. When something is not culled, it's rendered. That's all culling is. Now back to occlusion culling. Basically, occlusion culling is when a mesh is culled slash not rendered because there is an object blocking it from the camera. In GoDaddy, the way you get occlusion culling is with the occluder instance 3D node. Once you add it and click on it, you'll see in the inspector, it needs a shape. You can give it a primitive shape, like a cube, and anything behind the occluder cube shape will be culled. To give it a more advanced shape, you need to click Bake Occluders at the top, and it will give it an occlusion shape of the node's parent and siblings. LODs. LOD stands for Level of Detail, and it basically decimates a mesh as it gets farther from the camera. You can notice that as I get farther away, the tree becomes less detailed. The number of polygons on the tree get less and less the further away I go from it and go back to normal when I get closer. Getting LODs on a mesh is actually surprisingly simple in GoDaddy. By default, it's enabled on every mesh, but it's weak. To make it stronger, go to your mesh and find the LOD bias slider. The slider being lower makes the LOD stronger, and a higher value just makes the LODs weaker. Visibility range. Visibility range just makes it so when an object is beyond the given distance from the camera, it will be culled slash not rendered. You can also use visibility range to make an object too close to the camera be called. This is useful for when you have a lot of something spread throughout your scene, like trees. To enable it, go to your mesh and search for visibility range. Just bring the in, value up, and you'll see the mesh gets called when you are farther than the designated value on the slider. To make an object too close get called, you just need to increase the value on the begin slider. Just be careful to not make the value on the begin, slider larger than the value on the end slider or else your PC will explode. Baked lighting. Dynamic lights are designed to be moved around during runtime, which means they constantly have to recalculate which can cause a toll on performance. Instead of using dynamic lights like Omni Light 3D or Directional Light 3D, you can use a baked light map. When you bake a light, it does the heavy calculation only once. So if you have a static scene, then baked light maps would be the perfect choice. And the thing about a baked light map is that since it only has to do the lighting calculation once, you can make the lighting even more advanced, which will end up giving you better looking and more optimized lighting. Minimizing draw calls. A draw call is when your CPU has to tell your GPU to render a mesh. So if you have many different meshes, and your CPU is constantly telling your GPU to individually render each mesh, I assume you see a problem. One solution to this is a multi-mesh instance 3D, which is basically putting a bunch of meshes into one mesh node, and that mesh node needs only one draw call to render. In other words, instead of multiple draw calls for multiple meshes, it's one draw call for multiple meshes. That sounds a bit overpowered though. What's the catch? Well, since it's basically putting a bunch of meshes in one mesh node, the downside is that to render one, you have to render all of them. So view frustrum culling won't work for each individual mesh in your multi-mesh. So don't put too many things in one multi-mesh, and instead chunk your multi-meshes. Now let's move on to optimizing process. Now usually code in process is extremely lightweight, Unless you have something very screwed up in your code, like a bunch of loops, or if you have a bunch of objects with scripts that have underscore process in them. 
If you look at this script, you'll see some crazy for loops and calculations. And if I run the game, you'll see the frames are much worse. And when I deleted it, my frames go back to normal. When I optimize the code by having less iterations, the frames become good again. But if I add a ton of cubes with these scripts on them, the frames die again. Well, if you have a loop, you can put it in a thread, so it doesn't run on the main thread, which is the thread that is used for rendering. Or if you can't put it in a thread, one funny method I like to do is to put a timer somewhere in the loop. Basically, the timer makes the loop iterate much slower, but it saves your frame rate. Although it doesn't really work when you have it in process because it just creates a memory leak. Another solution is to make the scripts paused if they are a certain distance away from you. I have a cube manager here that calculates the distance between the player and each cube. And if the cube's too far, it pauses the cube. Or instead, just have the cube manager process the code for each cube. So instead of having one process for every cube, you have only one heavy process. But what if you tried all that and you are still lagging? Well, I don't know, clean up your code or something.